I wanted to do a quick shout out to uh, Huawei today. They have reclaimed the number one selling phone in China, the status, they have the crown, they have the glory, right? They have passed Oppo, they have passed Vivo, uh, Xiaomi. They have also Apple now, it's all the way down to the fifth phone maker in China. Okay, Apple, which used to be uh, number one, number two for a long time, it's all the way down to number five. Huawei has worked its way despite sanctions has worked its way all the way back up to number one on an ecosystem that they have built entirely from the ground up with the Kirin uh, 9000 chipset powering powering this meteor, uh, meteoric rise, their, their Harmony OS, right? Bringing cohesiveness to the ecosystem. Huawei has proved exceptional to the Chinese consumer market, shipping 12.2 million units last last uh, quarter. So I really want to give a shout out to, to Huawei there. If we look at the timeline, we know that in 2017, the U.S. cowardly accused Huawei of breaking sanctions with Iran, which of course they had no um, evidence for. They had, they, you know, the U.S. had its proxy in Canada arrest the Huawei princess Meng. That's Ren Zingfei's daughter. They had, they had him arrest, they had Canada arrest her right on, on trumped up charges of bank fraud which we went over on this channel and you know there was absolutely no proof of it was this long drawn out battle and eventually she was swapped with uh actual spies in china from canada so here you have a uh, huawei executive who actually didn't do any crimes <laughs> and she was being held hostage by canada on the bidding of the u.s and she was released only when people who actually were doing crimes, at least one of them was, um, in China were released and trade for her. And then we know that in 2019, Donald Trump uh, put Huawei on the sanction list. This prevented anybody in the U.S. from doing business with Huawei outside of getting a very restricted license. Uh, this took away the ability of Huawei to use the Android ecosystem. This was seen as a uh, pretty much a death sentence for its phone lineup at the time, which was starting to thrive. And for a little bit, it was. It also took away the fact that Huawei could not use newer versions of ARM. They couldn't license the newer versions of ARM, so they were stuck with ARM V8. Um, it, it, you know, it was it was a very strong blow to Huawei. But here we have, instead of Huawei going to the wayside like the U.S. was hoping, they have persevered and they have overcome. Okay? And it's been nothing short of a historic run. I don't know that we've ever seen anything like this in, in history for a company. Where a company is being attacked, singled out and attacked by a government. Right? The U.S. government is, was, is actively trying to destroy Huawei. And now they are on the verge. I, I think that, you know, I've argued on this channel that essentially they are one of the top two companies in the entire world when it comes to technology. And I think that technology is at the forefront. So you could say top two companies in the world, period. I place them along with Google, with Alphabet, which I believe people underestimate greatly. But that's another story. And so here we have Huawei has went ahead and they have built their own chipsets. Yes, they're still using off the ARM V8, so you could say they're a generation behind, but they have used new methods, right, on these chipsets. We've discussed this with DUV. They've used extreme DUV, uh, uh, building patterns, patterning down multiple times, multiple layers into the chips to achieve chips that are, they're, they're not quite where we are with the Snapdragons, but they're like, only one generation behind and for them to do that from nothing to come up from nothing right and be able to create a chip like that in a matter of five to seven years actually five years to say 2019 six years is absolutely incredible okay and understand something the chips that you have in your phone when you have a, a, a cohesive system like huawei and Apple has shown us where you control all the parts of the stack, right? You're going to get better performance regardless because you can optimize your phone for your hardware. That is the benefit that Apple had over everybody else. 
is that what well, their chipsets were designed by them and they could fine tune them specifically for their operating systems. Android can't do that because Android is a general purpose operating system that's run across many different chipsets, right? So it can't be optimized for one unit, right? Pixel's trying to do that with their specific version, but still they don't have the level of control that Apple and now that Huawei has with Harmony OS. And so when you look at Huawei, you might think, well, it doesn't have the latest chipset. How is it doing so well? Well, one, you can't really perceive the difference between these chips. So when I say, yeah, they are technically a generation behind, the chips in your phones nowadays are so fast that for your day-to-day -day use, most people, 90% of people aren't going to notice a difference. Okay? They really aren't. I probably could give you a budget chipset for what most of what you do, you know, on an Android phone, you're not even going to notice a difference unless you're gaming or something like that. But two, so that, remember, they're not budget chipsets. They're just one notch below the top tier. And two, they have built Harmony OS, so they couldn't use Android. They went out and they built an operating system from the ground up. And I want to tell you, when it comes to a chipset and how incredible it was to create their own chipset, creating your own operating system is even one step further. Okay? That's even one step further further and it wasn't based off of Linux. They started from the ground up. Android started with Linux. Nobody that I can think of in recent memory has started from the ground up on an OS and been successful in the last 30 years. I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. If you're in IT, correct me if I'm wrong where you have this large of scale of adoption. So yeah, I'm sure some people have started and they've made kernels and stuff and they've had small scale adoption. But on the scale of adoption we're talking here, where we're talking hundreds of millions of people. Has anyone in the last 30 years shipped anything that isn't based off of something prior? So like Microsoft, right? Everything is based off their prior versions of Windows. Uh, Android was based off of Linux. All these new versions of Linux are based off of Linux. Even Apple's OS started off of, uh, of Unix. It has a Unix core to it. I mean, they've changed that greatly, but maybe iOS. Maybe iOS, yeah. Actually, sorry. I think iOS was separate. I, I am not that familiar with iOS, but I do believe iOS is different enough from Mac OS. It's definitely not based on that, so that could be it. So that's what you would have. You have iOS and you have Harmony OS. That's it. That's it. That shows you how difficult it is. Google is trying to do something with Fuchsia. And they have it running some of their Nest Home devices. And they started that from the ground up. But it just shows you how difficult it is. Because they're like, well, we have Android and Android's here. We have Chrome OS. Right? And they keep using that instead of pouring money into Fuchsia. But Huawei had no other choice. They went forward and it's paying off, okay? Because now their devices running on their chips are fine-tuned. And so when you hear about these chips, unfortunately in America, I'm not able to use any of them. I would love to get one of these phones and test them out. But when you read and hear about these chips, nobody, nobody talks about them as being a budget phone or anything like this. These are flagship quality ship, uh, uh, flagship quality phones. Flagship quality, bro. Fl flagship quality. That's a shout out to uh, Flossy Carter. Um, so when people get these, and Huawei has focused on things that people really want. So Apple and Samsung are kind of getting a bit goofy. Samsung just recently released his phone. I forget what it was called. Was it the Edge? The Galaxy S25 Edge. It was a complete flop. They just tried to make it as thin as possible. And I'm not saying that making gimmicky phones is bad. I like when they make phones like this. I personally like it. But Samsung did it. And from what I read in the reports, it was like they honestly thought that it was going to be this huge hit when usually these type of gimmicky phones are niche products. And it's kind of like Samsung. You know with your Galaxy S25 Ultra. Uh, Apple, you know with your iPhone Pro Max. And now we look at Huawei and they're demonstrating 
that it's not about the thinness of a phone. Yes, go out and pursue this stuff. It's interesting, but those are the niche things. What users want is just a solid device that takes great photos and has solid performance, right? That's what the majority of users want. They want the best possible cameras. They want performance that's good enough. It doesn't have to be the best performance. People aren't interested. I mean, a lot of people are interested in gaming phones, but those are gamers. But your average you know, consumer isn't worried about cutting edge gaming on their phone. Just give me performance that is good enough, right? I mean, I want it top tier, but it doesn't have to be the extreme 1% and give me great cameras and give me a solid form factor. And this has been this has been what Huawei has been pursuing. Now you might say, Ruben, they made you know the mate fold with the tri-fold. Yes, of course, but they knew that was a niche device. Right? It wasn't like Samsung where Samsung is going out, and I read internally that they were talking about replacing their their plus model and their lineup with this device. And it's like, what are you doing? This is a niche device and the sales proved me right. Not, you know, not to give myself a pat on the back. And I really hope that they don't even consider replacing their plus model with this phone. It just wouldn't make sense. It's not what consumers want. And we're finding that out in the Chinese market, the largest market on earth for cell phones. So anyways, hats off to Huawei, okay? On this channel, we've covered Huawei a lot, I've talked about what they have done. It's been nothing short of amazing, but for a company to lose access to ARM, for a company to lose access to Android and have to start from the ground up, nobody has done that, nobody. Apple licenses every latest version of ARM, okay? Google didn't start from the ground up. They bought Android. Android was based off of Linux. They licensed ARM. Nobody has done what Huawei has done. So kudos to them. 12.2 million units shipped. Good luck in the future. You know that the Chinese brands, Vivo, uh, Honor, Xiaomi, the rest of them will be coming for Huawei. It's intense competition over there. Absolutely intense competition in that market. Apple looks like they're kind of falling away in that market. They're fading away. People are not willing to pay the premium, the Apple tax over in China. In America, we still are willing to pay the premium as Apple dominates this market, but over in China, they're not. More, pe more and more people are realizing they can get better value elsewhere. So that's what I got for you guys today. Uh, also, I didn't say it, but welcome to Ruben Tech. And uh, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. It means a lot. All of you out there, have a great weekend. Take care.